The Aztec Empire was one of the most powerful and well-known civilizations that existed in the Americas prior to the arrival of the Spanish. At its height, between the years 1300 and 1521, it governed approximately 371 city-states spread throughout 38 provinces and encompassed an area of approximately 200,000 square kilometers. The end consequence was a large number of distinct city-states, each of which adhered to its own set of norms, faiths, and legal systems. As long as each city-state paid the Aztec emperor the appropriate amount of tribute, the Aztec emperors generally did not interfere with the governance of the city-states. However, this loosely connected union of city-states did share a common emperor and overlapping ancestry, which meant that laws throughout the empire were similar but not exactly the same. As a direct consequence of this, the legal authority of each city differed. In addition, because this was a nomadic population, it was impossible to have a jail system, which meant that the concept of crime and punishment had to develop in a completely different manner. As a direct consequence of this, the punishments were severe, and anyone who broke the rules faced consequences such as being burned or strangulated. There was a strictly hierarchical system of rule, it was believed that Huey Tlatoani, the ruler of the Aztec government, had been divinely anointed and was able to communicate the intent of the gods to his people. This arrangement was similar to that of a monarchy. The Siwakuatl held the position of second in command and was accountable for the day-to-day -day operations of the government. There were hundreds of authorities and civil servants working under his command. Priests played an essential part as well, providing religious direction in conjunction with law enforcement. Judges were in charge of the judicial system, while military leaders were responsible for organizing battles, campaigns, and army training. Surprisingly, though, religion played a much smaller role in Aztec legal matters than it did in most other aspects of Aztec daily life. The aspect of practicability was given more weight. Most crime was dealt with locally. Those who were accused of committing a crime were typically brought before a local court, which was presided over by the most experienced warriors in the region. If it was determined to be a more serious offense, the case would be tried at the Tecalco Court located in Tenochtitlan, the capital city. The emperor's palace was often utilized as a venue for the most serious offenses, such as those involving aristocrats, who were expected to serve as an example for the common people. When it came to offenses of this nature, the emperor himself would sometimes serve as the judge. Because a significant portion of Aztec crime and punishment jurisdiction was rapid and local, the system was remarkably effective. This was required and effective because there was no established jail system in Aztec society at the time. Many crimes warranted the death sentence. The punishments for a wide variety of offenses were severe. Homicide, perjury, rape, abortion, highway robbery, moving boundary markers, serious defamation of character, destruction of crops, selling stolen property, weight and measure fraud, witchcraft, incest, official graft, pederasty, inciting a public disturbance, sedition, treason, desertion, or insubordination by soldiers, use of the emperor's insignia and serious judicial misconduct all resulted in death. Theft was a particularly heinous form of criminal activity. Robbery from merchants, robbery from a temple, theft of guns or military insignia, and theft of more than 20 ears of grain were all examples of crimes that justified the death penalty. Restitution served as the standard form of punishment for thefts of a minor nature. The thief, on the other hand, was forced into servitude by the victim if they were unable to pay for the stolen property. Both members of the adulterous marriage, as well as bystanders who were aware of the crime but chose not to report it, were subject to the death penalty for adultery. There was, as there always has been, a double standard. Men were punished solely if they had intercourse with a married woman, whilst married women were judged culpable regardless of the circumstances surrounding the marital status of the men with whom they had relations. Under old laws, minors who were caught drinking in public faced the death penalty. Elders who were beyond the age of 70, on the other hand, might drink as much alcohol as they pleased without fear of repercussions. Punishments were gruesomely creative. The punishments were frequently very harsh. The use of the death penalty was widespread, given the absence of both jails and the possibility of being tortured. 
Upon the proclamation of the sentence, the culprit who was found guilty could be immediately put to death, strangled, or even stoned on the spot before being transported to the altar of the local temple. The nobles, who were in charge of setting a good example for everyone else, were frequently subjected to harsher punishments. In a similar vein, for first-time offenders or those who have committed offenses of a lesser severity, possible punishments include having your home demolished or having your head shaved. In the same vein, there were several offenses that were not seen as being of particularly grave nature. In these types of situations, the offender would be required to provide restitution to the victim. For instance, if there was a fight, the individual who initiated it might be the one who is responsible for paying for medical expenses. Slavery was used as a form of punishment rather frequently, and even though it was uncommon, banishment was sometimes a sanction as well. Hard and fast laws developed later. Despite the fact that many punishments were decided by groups of city warriors or elders in a local court, the city-state of Texcoco, which was ruled by Nezahualcoyotl, is credited with being the place where a common system of law was formed to the greatest extent. It was legalistic in the sense that cases were decided based on specific sorts of evidence, regardless of the socioeconomic level of the parties engaged in the case. The law was composed of 80 written statutes that mandated harsh punishments to be carried out in public, which, in turn, established a legal structure for the regulation of social behavior. Children could be sentenced to death. It was generally accepted in legal circles that children under the age of 10 were legally incapable of committing crimes. Despite this, kids were still supposed to respect and obey their parents, and if they failed to do so, their parents had the right to take them to court for their disobedience. Especially in situations in which the children had abused their parents, the court had the authority to inflict severe punishments, such as beatings, loss of inheritance, or even death. It was considerably tougher for children of nobility, who could be put to death for being rude, cowardly, or wasteful. Children of nobility could be executed for any of these behaviors. Prisoners of war were treated viciously. Additionally, the Aztecs had a wide variety of ingenious methods for the execution of captured enemies. Even though they were offered up as part of a religious ceremony, the fact that they were already under captivity shows that there was also an obvious element of punishment involved in their treatment. The prisoner would be slowly cooked in a campfire, which was one of the most gruesome methods of execution. The condemned would be repeatedly thrown into the fire and pulled out of it until they were very close to passing away. After that, their still beating heart would be removed from their chest while it was still beating. A more straightforward method involved laying the prisoner down on a sacrificial stone, cutting open their chest with an obsidian sword, and then removing their heart from their chest cavity. Aztecs gave captured warriors the death of a soldier because of the high regard in which they were held by the Aztecs. Some people would be bound to a rock and then given a club with a shaved edge to use as a weapon against an Aztec warrior, who would be armed with a club similar to the one they were given, but would have a pointed edge. A similar fate could await them if they were shackled to a platform by their ankles and forced to fight. If the prisoner warrior could win their freedom, this was almost always the outcome. The Aztecs had their own version of the military execution method known as the firing squad. A white dot would be put on the condemned person's chest at the location of their heart, and they would be chained in a standing posture between two poles. After that, the archers would shoot arrows into every area of the body, with the exception of the head and the heart, which they would keep for last. The ordeal of the female victims was unique and baffling in its complexity. Then, after being elevated to the status of deities, they would have their heads severed. We hope you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about what civilization or time period we should talk about. Also, watch another video here.